more dangerous playoff team. I'm going to go with the Jags here. And mm. They're a team that we don't get to see often, but they're a dangerous team in the sense that we know what Trevor Lawrence is made of. We know what Travis Etienne is made of and how those guys have kind of taken off late. And you look at them the past two weeks. They've gotten back-to-back -back wins, and the defense is doing a great job of getting the ball in the hands of Trevor Lawrence and allowing him to do what he does. In the last two weeks, these guys have six turnovers. Six turnovers. They got to Ryan Tannehill. That was Trayvon Walker with a sack. Wingard, Wingard. making an interception. Yes, that's our guy. Long hair, don't care, flowing out the back of his helmet. Shaquille Quarterman making a hit on Derrick Henry. They have seven sacks in that span, too. And when you can do this on defense, they know they're not dominating out there and shutting opposing offenses down. But when you can create turnovers and you can get the ball back to the offense, give them short fields, give them more opportunities, gain momentum, these are big plays within the game that allow you to come back from a deficit like they were facing when they went against the Dallas Cowboys. It allows you to put a ton of points on the board like when they were playing the Tennessee Titans. So this team, to me, is dangerous because they're confident. They're feeling themselves. Mm -hmm. The coaching staff has imparted the wisdom and the ability for those guys to go out there and execute yeah. and play free. You can see it this season. So the Jaguars are a very dangerous team if they can find a way to slip into the playoffs. All right, I'm going to push back on you on this Please one do. Because if you came out and you said, look, Doug Peterson's been there, and he knows it. And you said Trevor Lawrence, the number one pick, and he's finally hitting it. They gave up 34 points the last week, yeah. that defense. You want to talk defense? Mm -hmm. The Jets Specifically. defense. The Jets defense, Jason. That's where we're at, right? Mm -hmm. If you're talking defense, I think, the, I think no team wants to see that Jets defense line up against them because they hurt you. <laughs> they, they're just physical. They're just like uh, a nightmare to play. I look at those Bills games. Buffalo got the best of them in one of them, but the other one, the Jets won, and I promise you the Bills would not like to see the Jets again. Look at the defensive ranks of the Jets here. Talking outdoor football, January. I mean, this is what I'd be scared to see. I'd, be, I'd lose sleep over Lawrence. I would. I would. And I think that their defense has, is very... Um, What's the word? Opportunistic? Mm -hmm. Perfect. They, they hit the, the touchdown. Jets, though, are just like a pain in the butt. And I look at those Buffalo games. Let's see some footage in here. Like, yeah, the footage you're going to remember is Mike White getting crushed by Matt Milano. But on the other end, Josh Allen has struggled around, in yeah. two games. They lost to the Jets yeah. in New Jersey. And then in the rain, the Jets, even like, Sauce Gardner, don't even throws him on anymore. Quinn Williams is supposed to, uh, well, not supposed to, is trending towards coming back tomorrow night and will play. Like, okay. Lurking. <laughs> Talking about Mahomes, Allen, Burrow, all these guys. They line up against the Jaguars. They say, okay, all right. Line up against the Jets. Like, oh, crap. <laughs> now, the Jets don't have a quarterback. Yeah. The Jets can't move the ball. The Jets are anemic on offense. That's all whatever. I'm just talking <laughs> January <laughs> football. I don't want to see this. I don't want to get beat up by Quinn and Williams for, for 60 minutes. I, it's a good question. Jaguars are a worthy opponent. And look, it's interesting. They both can make it because the Jaguars, the way they make it is they win the AFC South. Mm -hmm. They went out. They beat the Titans. They're in. Mm -hmm. The Jets, they can make it as a wild card still. So I, it's not like it's either or. It could be both. I personally am scared of Lawrence, but I don't want to face that Jets defense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I can see where you're going, but... The Jets' offense is just like, yeah, I don't want to play against you. their defense. Mm -hmm. They go out there, they get the ball back for the offense. You just go back out there, take it away, and now mm -hmm. you give Trevor Lawrence a short field. Yeah. So, Well, the crux of this is, like, when I think of dangerous, who is the team that could be like, oh, my God, they beat the Chiefs. Like, they beat mm -hmm. the Bengals. Mm -hmm. They went in in wild card weekend. <laughs> Holy crap, the Chiefs just got knocked out, or the Bengals, or whoever, the Bills. Um, I tend to go in, in for that recipe, too. I tend to go defense as well. I do. Like, maybe Trevor Lawrence puts up 40 and they win 40 to 38. I don't think you're winning that game with Joe Burrow or Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> I, or I just don't. I, I don't think you can get in the shootout with them. But I think you can beat them 20 to 19. And that's why I would say the Jets, too. The problem is what Jason brought up is, like, we got to get to that 20 points. You know, and we're not going to score two or three defensive touchdowns. Who the hell is playing quarterback for the Jets? And if it's Zach Wilson, what the hell are we getting? I, I just don't know. And there's a great theater right now. The best theater in New York City right now is watching the Jets team leaders talk about Zach Wilson. Because, my <laughs> gosh, they're trying. Sala, God bless him, is putting throwing everything against the wall. Everything. To the instant coffee metaphors, to we're being too hard on him. To, and then C.J. Mosley's doing the same thing that Wilson threw an interception in this game, and then he came back and played fine. And they're like, see, that was great. He didn't fold. And Salah's like, well, in games past, he would have folded. So it's all these kind of backhanded compliments. 
You don't have to squint your eyes to read between the lines to say that maybe they don't have these, this unbridled and incredible belief in him or love for him, but Mike White has got ribs right now, and that's the best we can do. Ribs. So listen, if the Jets get to the playoffs, you better believe Mike White's going to be the man and should be the man. And Mike White's a cowboy. I can see Mike White beating Joe Burrow in a playoff game. I can't see Zach Wilson doing it. So we're looking at medical reports and waiting and waiting and Pelicero's and Rappaport's. I don't think Zach Wilson's shown anything to say they can go into Arrowhead Stadium or Cincinnati and win a playoff I, game. I think Mike White could. I, I, this is for the table. Sal has been you know, on the podium and everything. How would you play media trainer? How would you handle if you're talking to Robert Sala? How would you handle this situation? We know what's going on. Zach isn't where they want him to be, and yet here's Trevor Lawrence, the first overall pick. How would you handle it? It's tough. I think you got to just go cliche heavy, complimentary football. He did a thing the other day when he was he was kind of brushing back on you know on the instant coffee thing. He's taken so much so much flack. And I understand it. You got to do it, but you shouldn't do it. Like, I think he's a little conflicted. I think he wants to coach some football, <laughs> and this is not why he got into football. I, I don't think there's a massive support for Zach Wilson right now in the locker room. I'm reading between the lines, but they're trying because he's the guy right he's now. Guy. So I would just say to Salah, just short, sweet, in your seat, you know, and just hopefully get a win Keep this plugging away. As it pertains to Zach Wilson, <laughs> I find it so odd that a couple weeks ago he was getting buried for his, you know, what he said in the post-game interview and the fact that, that his rough. teammates didn't back him up. And, you know, do you feel responsible for it? No. It's like, all right, ooh, like that was not good. And then no one came to have his back. Yet now this week people want to have his back? It's strange. Yeah. It is a strange kind of flipping on a dime and is it because Mike Wade pl plays so well but I'm not gonna go Jets I am gonna go Trevor Lawrence because I think a shootout in the playoffs is exactly what everybody wants to see and Definitely if a team not. is gonna beat the Bengals or the Chiefs sometimes it is gonna be in accordance to a quarterback battle and while I think Zach White or Zach Wilson has kind of uh, Trevor Lawrence is doing this and it's all at the hands of Doug Peterson uh, nothing more important to me than the word comfortable I think with with this quarterback with Trevor Lawrence because this is a guy we saw come out of Clemson who was an absolute star. There is a reason why he went where he did in the draft. There was massive understood potential there, and he is finally living up to that. Speaking of giving someone some wiggle room to grow, what Robert Hall is asking people to do, Zach Wilson, hello, arrival of Trevor Lawrence over the last couple weeks. Week 15 of this season, he beats the Cowboys. He throws for 318 yards. Four touchdowns, one pick, and he beats the Cowboys in overtime. Mm -hmm. What did he do last year? Texans lost 210 yards, not a TD, not a pick, 73 passer rating. Just these weird benign numbers that we didn't really know what to do with last season. He wasn't himself. He wasn't feeling comfortable. He wasn't feeling confident. Anyone who feels good in the space that they're in, that they're allowed to operate in and work in, and I'm saying all these things to say, it was a head coaching problem. Yeah, Jamie, he has a human being as a head coach this year. I'll he say does, it for you. yeah. He's a real human being. Doug Peterson is there. There's respect there. Doug Peterson puts his guys in the right spot. He did it in Philadelphia. He's done it everywhere he's gone in his career. Uh, so Trevor Lawrence is talented, but he needed a guy, and he found it in Doug Peterson. And frankly, I think that, to me, would mean the Jags, because we're seeing growth here. So come January, Jags are more dangerous in the playoffs. Mm. Opening round, Jags would be at home if they win that they AFC yeah. South. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's like an interesting little wrinkle in that, too. Do the Titans still exist as an organization? They've lost four straight, and the Jaguars have won four straight. I, they might make you waffle. We're going to talk teams that make you waffle yeah, later the on. The Titans? Yeah, I, I put them on Give the list. Give us a sign of life right now. Put some, well, come put some on. syrup yeah, on top. Oh, my gosh. Well, Coach Vrabel's Coach of the Year. Let's go. <laughs> what are we doing? We'll see.